I wanted the book to be as much as possible an application of the stuff that I had been thinking about, which was mainly cultural evolution. And also, um, I really didn't know if I wanted the world to be without religion because I didn't know what would replace it. And I wanted to think about that. And I thought, well, the only way to think about that is to think about how it works and, and see if we can figure out some more and get, get behind some of the myths about it. that I discovered was that the best, the most realistic course of action is to think about taking steps that will favor very strongly, even in some regards, force the, the evolution of religion into more benign forms. And I think that's entirely possible. It's my idea that we should have a compulsory education about the world's religions for all children. If we actually had that in place, I think any religion that could survive under those circumstances in that environment d would deserve to survive. The obvious dangers are the fanatics, uh, the cults, and so forth. But I think that any religion, any religion, has one feature which is deeply disturbing, deeply antithetical to of free society, and that is the glorification of irrationality. Not just the toleration of it, but the positive protection of it and treating it as a privileged role. One of the main messages of my book is patience. Things are actually going our way. What we're seeing now is, in some regards, I think the death throes of religion. Religions have never before, in the thousands of years they've existed, they have never had to deal with the sort of democratization of information. And they are desperate. They are absolutely desperate, try, trying to figure out how to handle this. I think that we should recognize that and just keep a gentle, steady pressure, particularly, for instance, on Islam. I think. The education of Islamic girls in itself would do so much good for Islam that Islam would become such a much better religious tradition if they would educate their women. And that's not, after all, a very vicious thing to ask for, is it? I mean, it's so obvious. We should study the, the dynamics of religious behavior and creeds and texts and beliefs with the same dispassionate intensity that we study global warming. The world is so uh, interconnected now that missteps can have dire consequences. So we want to study closely to make sure that we're not inadvertently tripping the wrong lever. What we should do is reverse engineer religions and we should have as our tentative assumption that any feature that we see that is widespread that religions share or that successful religions share, we should assume that it's paying for itself 
But there's probably a good reason, and it may well not be the reason that the people think. The one aspect of it that I'm foggy about, that I can't get clear in my own head, is to what extent can we have the allegiance, the love, the loyalty, without the, the irrationality. Once the stories are just stories, once the traditions are, the ceremonies are more or less denuded of their, of their supernatural elements, Will they still be moving? Well, you know, I have some hope that they will be.